So the physical meaning of the Leibniz theorem can be understood as follows. On one side we have the rate of change of the quantity f integrated over the volume over the domain x and that is equal to the rate of change of f integrated over the domain plus db dt times f b comma t minus da dt f a comma t. So this term represents the contribution from the fact that f changes in time. But these terms represent the fact that the domain limits are changing in time. So if the domain does not change, we simply have this equal to this. So we can easily move the differentiation inside the integration. But if the limits of integration are themselves changing in time, then we have to take into account the appropriate quantity. Let's try to derive the Leibniz theorem in 3D. Okay. So let's say we have a control volume, this, and it's moving with a velocity equal to b. So at a time t plus delta t, this control volume appears somewhere here. And the control volume is deformable. At any point, the normal vector points outside the body. Okay. So let us now find out the rate of change of f okay so using first principles it is v at t plus delta t f which is a in general a function of x and t dv minus integral of v at t so this should be t plus delta t Let's write it properly. F at x comma t dv. So this is the definition of the derivative of the integral. So ddt of f in Eulerian terms is the total derivative. This is equal to the limit delta t tends to 0 integral of f at x t plus delta t dv but now this integral is at is for the deformed volume so v at t plus delta t minus this so let us focus on the numerator for now so the numerator is integral f x t plus delta t dv v at t plus delta t minus integral of x f comma t dv at v. So we can split the first term as integral f x comma t plus del f del t delta t dv v plus integral f x comma t plus del f del t delta t dv delta v. We have used two ideas. So we have used two ideas. First, we have done a Taylor series expansion. And second, we have split the integral v plus delta v v at t plus delta t we have written as v an integral of delta v eventually we need to find out how delta v varies in time ok eventually we need to f figure out how delta v varies in time so far so good So 
the second term this term is this integral v f x t dv so look we have this integral f x comma t dv v plus integral v del f del t delta t dv plus integral f dv delta v plus integral delta v del f del t delta t delta v minus integral f x comma t dv so this term and this term cancel so we have integral del f del t delta t dv plus integral f dv delta v plus integral del f del t delta t dv and so now we divide everything by delta t so so far this was the change difference in integrals now we divide everything by delta t so we have del f del t dv over the volume plus integral delta v f dv dt delta t plus integral del f del t dv now if we take the limit delta t tends to 0 quite obviously the delta v will also tend to 0 delta v will also tend to 0 but so look in this particular term the numerator is is also equivalent to some mean value of f over delta v multiplied by the delta v and we have a delta t over here so the value of this particular term will be this so this is the mean value but now if delta t and delta v both go to zero it is not necessary for the ratio to also go to zero the ratio can be still finite however in this particular term as per my as per the f mean value theorem this will be equal to del f del t some mean value of del f del t multiplied by delta v as delta t tends to 0, delta v will go to 0. So unless the rate of change of f at that instant is very very large, this term will go to 0. In general, this term will go to 0. So only this this particular integral will survive because of this ratio. But this integral is order delta v and hence will be 0. So in the limit, this in the limit delta t tends to 0, we thus have d area uh, d integral dt is equal to integral over v del f del t dv plus integral f dv delta t over the volume so what exactly is this delta v so if this was the this light blue was the initial volume this is the final volume delta v stems from the fact that as t tends to 0 this light blue will tend to uh, this dark blue will tend to the light blue but because of deformation there is still some delta v okay so delta v is a consequence of deformation the deformation occurs because of the velocity b so if the area swept by the velocity b can be found out that will be equal to delta v delta v okay so b dot n da represents the area swept by the volume which is moving with the velocity b and the quantity that it is sweeping is simply f b dot n cap d a okay so the volume swept will be equal to 
B dot n cap d a multiplied by delta t because this represents the rate of uh, this represents the velocity which is meter per second this represents area meter square so this is the volume per unit time so once you multiply by delta t so b dot n cap delta t represents the length swept so this length in the n direction so this is the area n in this location this is the area n in the other location and so on so b dot n delta t represents the length swept this multiplied by the area represents the volume swept okay we will make this idea over here so we have just seen that dv is b dot n da delta t thus dv by del delta t is equal to b dot n da so the integral over the volume is now successfully converted into a area integral So d d t of integral f d v is thus a contribution from these two terms. The first term represents the temporal rate of change. Because of the fact that the function f can change itself in time. But this particular term represents the deformation of the control volume. this stems from the fact that the limits of integration are changing in time and those limits when they change in time they are changing because of the velocity and the velocity has a net flux so this is essentially the flux of a of f over a okay so this term is the flux and this term is when it's multiplied by f it represents the flux of f so this is like the equivalent of the leibniz theorem because in leibniz theorem we had d d t of f x t d x a to b is equal to integral del del t of x f t d x plus f b t d b d t minus f a t d a d t so this term is equivalent to this term over here and this term is equivalent to this term over here okay so keep this in mind the rate of change of f is equal to the rate of change of integral of f over the volume is equal to the integral of the rate of change of f over the volume plus the net flux of f carried over inside the volume and so by choosing the appropriate quantity f we can have conservation of mass conservation of momentum and so on and that will be a part of the next lectures